Father, God bless you. Yes, um, welcome to my world. Welcome to my world, wherever you are. I salute you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Yes, we, we trust God even today that he's going to be with us. Um, you will not regret. I surely believe you will be blessed even today. Yes, we thank God once again for giving us grace to be alive again. I will repeat my words. Uh, one of the blessings that God gave us in this century is internet, social media. We should capture it, use it for the glory of God, particularly us young people. Yes, internet is for good use, yet the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's why many people are destroyed by social media. Many businesses are collapsing because of social media. Many marriages are being killed by social media. Um, many individuals, they use internet for pornography because it depends which hands are you putting it unto. Thank God for the revelation of internet. We are going to use it for the glory of God. And I would like to urge all those who love the Lord and all those who follow the Lord to use the internet for the glory of God. Yes, there will be challenges because you don't invite temptations. You don't invite um, social media uh, challenges. But you have power to decide. You have power to say yes. You have power to say no. I thank God for social media. That is why now, as I'm speaking here, the anointing which God has bestowed in my life is affecting you wherever you are. The anointing which is found in the book of Isaiah 27, 10, because of the anointing, the yokes are broken. Yes, thank God for internet. Thank God you are at your home, wherever you are, but you are receiving from this grace. We bless God. Greetings at Johannesburg. Greetings at Cape Town. Yes, greetings M Tata. Greetings M. Queenstown, uh, greetings to Western Cape George, wherever you are, heavenly greetings. Yes, let us take our reading today from the book of Colossians chapter 3. We're going to read only verse 1 and verse 2. It reads as follows. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. If ye then be risen with Christ, Seek those things 
which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. First of all, Bazalwana, this is what we must understand. We know that today is a resurrection day. It's a resurrection day today. Yes, many people say most boring Passover because we are indoors. <laughs> yes. But if we remember the original Passover, we are now receiving the taste of the original Passover, which is uh, what happened in the book of Exodus. Uh, they were inside their homes while the angel of death was passing. Uh, and the Bible records that any house which is not smeared the blood of the lamb, the angel of death will strike the firstborn. So, Passover, it's not us who does it. It's not us who are passing over. But our position, it is to remain in a blood-stained position. Let me repeat myself. It is God who does Passover. During Passover, we are given just grace to be safe, to be positioned in a place which the blood of the Lamb is smeared. So we are now receiving that taste. That means we are not supposed to be religious. We should be spiritual. Work with God. Yes, even the time of the, of the original Passover now, which is Jesus Christ, when he gave himself now to be a Passover for us. It was not a celebration, but it was a real thing. The king of heavens striking the king of darkness, conquering him on the cross. We are now given grace to have a celebration. Now, if we don't have a gathering because of whatever that is happening in the world, we should also praise God for that. Because God is worshipped in spirit and in truth. If we have ability now to worship God in our homes, to us pastors now, it's a, it's a real challenge, it's a real deal because if you are fascinated by crowds, then you have a problem. Now I'm preaching. It's only one person who's carrying a camera before me, my wife. I don't see you. And there is no, I don't even hear your cheering, your amen, your hallelujah, your nyuga straga. <laughs> I don't hear those things. Now, it's a real deal now. It's a real deal. This is a foretaste of what is about to happen. This is a foretaste of what is about to happen in this world. Because sooner or later, we are going to be persecuted as Christians. But thank God, the rapture will take place. Thank God. But let us tune ourselves to be versatile. Let us tune ourselves to know that if the church or the building is closed, the original building is not closed. If 
the church is closed, the original church is not closed. If the temple is closed, the original temple is not closed. Let us just be realistic. Thank God for this time. Because it teaches some of us that we do not rely on the crowd to preach the word of God with power. We walk by faith and not by sight. I, I, I don't see you now. I, I don't see you. And I don't see any movement now, which I, I see that, that that one is blessed. No, it's faith now. As I'm speaking, I'm connecting with you through faith, through the waves of faith, through the waves of faith. Now they are receiving. Now they are receiving. Now my, 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 my spiritual eyes ought now to be tuned to see what is happening in your homes. Thank God. This is the time whereby we exercise our heavenly instruments, our heavenly weapons, our heavenly tools. One of them which is necessary in this time is faith. Whatever I will say, when I'm praying, the Lord will touch you in your own home. Why? Because you believe. It's no longer about who sends this and now. It's not all about to fake and, and it's about the reality. Thank God. Yes, let's go straight to, to the word of God. I will not be long. We are rushing to a meeting uh, in the nearby. Okubana vuswa kunye no kristu funani zindo zapezu if, 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 and remember my brethren, I said to you one time, whenever you, you, you see the word if, choice is featured there. If, then, you are risen with Christ, seek things which are above sick things which are above if sick if sick first of all the birth of Jesus Christ the things that we should deal with here the birth of Jesus Christ was miraculous there was not a single person in this world who conceived without sleeping with a man except one lady called Mary the Virgin. The birth of Jesus Christ broke all the laws of nature. The birth of Jesus Christ broke all the laws of nature. Two, the growing, the lifestyle of Jesus Christ was to set a trend for those whom he broke the nature for. Let me repeat myself. His lifestyle, when he was, li when he was living in this world, he set it as a trend. 2 6 first john 2 6 usishiele imi amanyatelo ekuthi nisinyathele ngawo he gave us a way of living his death paid our debt once and for all his death was to pay each other late. Each other late with justice system of God. Because the justice system of God was saying all sinners should die. When he lived until the cross, he paid our debt. When God was punishing Jesus Christ, he was not disciplining him because Jesus Christ was sin himself. 
So, all the wrath of God was being poured on Jesus Christ on our behalf. So that we are no longer indebted to God. He who knew no sin was made sin. 5.21 of 2 Corinthians tells us so. 5.19 to 21. He who knew no sin was made sin so that we may be the righteousness of God. By dying, he was taking all the punishment, all the anger, the rage, the wrath, of God upon himself. He paid all our debt. His resurrection was to declare victory. Now, our debt is paid. The, the duty now, it is to declare victory over anything that was enslaving us. His resurrection was now giving us triumph, victory over death, sin, addictions, and anything that enslaves us. By Jesus Christ rising from the dead, it gave us an assurance that though we may die, my God, though we may die, we will surely rise again. Though we may fall, we will surely get up again. Because now, we are not sinning by force. Sin is no longer now dominant is no longer now overpowering us is no longer we, we are no longer now forced whereby you are going to do something which you do not want to do but because of the law of sin in your body by rising from the dead he broke that cord he broke that enslavement he broke that that now we don't sin by force, but we sin by choice. Sin is no longer powerful over us. Sin is no longer triumphant over us. Sin is no longer our master. Remember, the Bible says, 6.23 of Romans, the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. That means by him rising from the dead. By him being raised from the dead. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11 to 14, the Bible says, Ukuba umoya. Walowo wamvusayo Kristu kela bafile umi kaphakathi kwenu uya kuyenza imizimba yenu enokufa iphile we are alive now by the power of the holy spirit even sicknesses in our bodies they are no longer powerful over us hallelujah they are no longer powerful because they are contenting with the spirit of god which raised Jesus from the grave. His resurrection was an assurance to us that we are more than the conquerors. Romans chapter 8, 37 tells us so. We are not just conquerors, but we are more than the conquerors. What does this mean? It means that we conquer something even before it comes. We conquer temptations before they come. We conquer trials, persecution. We conquer sicknesses and diseases. We conquer viruses before they are cooked. Hallelujah. We conquer them because 
We are more than the conquerors. We conquer it before it is released from where it is coming from. We are already conquered because Christ rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. After he rose from the dead, remember in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55, Paul encounters death and asks death, Lupina ulam vila lako ufa. Lupina uloiso lako artist. When this man rose from the dead, Paul, the apostle of Christ, asked death, Where is your sting, O death? Where is your victory, O Hades? Because when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, death was defeated. Yes, if you read in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, he tasted death for all. He tasted death for all and conquered over death. 2.14 now tells us so. Conquered that which we were afraid of is afraid of us. Now, death is a transport to another world. Death now is no longer what we fear. Death now is when we are about to be transcended, to be changed from one place to another at the blink of an eye when death comes and strike us we smile we laugh we celebrate because we know that we are no longer under the yoke of death but god uses death to be a transport to the shores of glory christ rose from the dead christ rose from the dead we are now victorious. We are now fearless. Undefeated. Chapter 24. Little Lungisa Luaga Stangel Pindel Pagame. Goba Christ to Yesu. Wavuka. Asi we sales kungluze. Patisi was pagame. Sile temba. Logo banga ba he who conquered over all weaknesses, addictions, sin, and all its activities. He is alive. 1419 of John says that I am alive. That I live. You shall also live. Oh my God. What an honor. What a privilege. That I live. You shall also live. Now, this is what you must, after the resurrection of Christ, his ascension was to give us a title deed, the citizenship in heaven. He said in the book of John 14, from 2 downward, he says, Dioni lungi selela indaw, endi nikabawo. We have now a guaranteed, I have a title deed of my mansion house in heaven. Because Christ in the book of Hebrews 6 verse 18, the Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to lie. He cannot lie. Romans chapter 3 verse 4, let God be true and all men be liars. He cannot lie. If he said he prepared a place for us, it means that he prepared a place for us. When he ascended, he was giving us a guarantee that indeed you are no longer the citizens of the world. You are the pilgrims. In this world, Singaba Ambil, Quillis, Sisia Jula, Spelelanka. Now we are waiting for his second coming. 
his second coming will be a shock to this world. As much as the whole day in television, they are playing a corona thing. Those days, they will be playing. If the virus of corona can shake the world like this, how much more rapture? Woe unto those who will be left behind. The whole day, day after day, they will try to figure out billions are missing. Billions are missing. We will be no more in this world. That's why our scripture says, Ugubana vuswa. Alleluia. Ugubana vuswa. Kunye no Christ. Funani. Is in those apezo. In the book of John, chapter 17, verse 16, the Bible records that Father, do not take them out of this world, but keep them from the tribulation of this world. They are in the world, but not of the world. They are in the world, but not of the world. One day, we are waiting for that big event now. If the nation can be like this, by a virus, how will it be when we check out of this world? The brothers and sisters, holiness is the qualification for rapture. Hang on! Don't give up. Fight! Don't lose your heart. There are many events that are going to happen, but in the midst of them, now, the word seek, it means to search. It means to, to, to you, to do an effort. It means that you are going to do something. You search, you seek. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7, seek, you shall find. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened to you. Ask, it shall be given. Now, it means that when we seek the things from above, we are going to neglect the things from beneath. If we are going to seek, thoroughly seeking the things from above, Nine of Luke tells us so. That means there are things of this world. Because we are busy searching, seeking the things from above. What are the things from above that we ought to seek? In the book of Hebrews 12, verse 14, the Bible says, Pays you peace with all and holiness, which no man will see the Lord without it. The most important thing that we should seek on daily basis is holiness. Holiness. Because above, which is in heaven, holiness is a lifestyle. 
Angels are holy. People there are holy. The streets are holy. Animals and plants are holy. Everything is holy. Even the atmosphere is holy. God is holy. Each we in a lay to our Paglom Sab, Holy Spirit. He makes us therefore to be holy beings. If na vuso, it we na le tu gulom sa. Four thirty of Ephesians. Ninga menzi shungu mo ingwele na twi nanga aye ni twi na lumsa oksindi so which is the second coming of Christ, the day of salvation. Salvation from our flesh. Salvation from this world. Such we na each we na le to go Holy Spirit. Who sends us as you holy beings. No longer human beings, but holy beings. Hallelujah. No longer human beings, but holy beings. We will be called, therefore, saints abanueli. Through the Holy Spirit. Now there, where we are going, we will enter because we are holy. Heaven is a perfect place. That's why in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, the Bible says we must be perfect. Because we are going to be a perfect place. We are going to meet a perfect God. We should be there for be perfect beings. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We should be holy. See, sin anelwe, si uba sa vuswa kunye nae, kumele si funu bunwe. Endo kale masifuna yomoto. Mali, eme 